At one point in my life, I thought Hennen Barra was going to be the greatest of all time. After watching his fight with Brad Pickett, I knew he was a special fighter and that he would become a champion one day. But it's 2018 and Barra isn't even a top 15 fighter in his division. So how did the most promising fighter in the company's history all of a sudden fall off? Hey guys, it's Keon and today I want to talk about former UFC bantamweight champion Hennen Barra. Hennen Barra's career really interests me because of how fast he rose up to the ranks and how fast he fell off. And his career has led to me and other MMA fans asking, what happened? Hennen Barra made his MMA debut on April 14th, 2005 when he fought Jao Paulo Rodriguez at Heat FC 3 in Natal, Brazil. He lost the fight by unanimous decision, but soon after, he went on to record one of the greatest streaks in MMA history by beating 23 fighters in a row. I get that most of these fights were in Brazil and the competition wasn't the most elite, but 23 wins in a row is very impressive for a guy who lost his pro debut. In 2010, Burrell made his WEC debut against Anthony Leone, where he submitted him 229 in the third round. He then fought Chris Carriasso later that year and submitted him 247 in the first round. By 2011, the WEC merged with the UFC and Burrell went on to defeat Cole Escovedo by unanimous decision at UFC 130. Burrell was then slated to fight brawler Brad Pickett at UFC 138. This fight, in my opinion, built the Hen and Burrell momentum in the UFC. The the two fighters slugged it out for 4 minutes before Barrao submitted Pickett by rear naked choke. The fight not only showcased Barrao's skill, but also his granite chin. Both fighters received fight of the night honors. The fight proved to grow the stock of both fighters, especially Barrao's. At UFC 143, Hen and Barrao fought top 10 bantamweight Scott Jorgensen, where he beat him by unanimous decision. At this point, Barrao was on a 28 fight win streak, and this caused many MMA fans to take notice. There were talks that if Barrao fought champion Dominic Cruz, he would absolutely destroy him. Although Barrao was slated to fight a number one contender fight at UFC 148, he got the call to fight for the interim bantamweight championship against Uriah Faber at UFC 149. The biggest thing most MMA fans remember about UFC 149 was how bad of a card it turned out to be. But in the main event, Hennen Burrell went on to dominate Uriah Faber by unanimous decision. It was a fight that was very reminiscent of Jose Aldo's title fight against Uriah Faber back in the WEC, due to Burrell constantly attacking the legs of Faber, causing Faber to not be able to walk by the end of the fight. Burrell became the interim bantamweight champion and talks of him and Dominic Cruz fighting to unify the belt came into fruition. During this time, Dominic Cruz was going through his worst stretch of injuries. This eventually led to Barrao defending the interim belt not once, but twice. I mean, who the hell defends their interim belt twice? Hennen Barrao. In his first title defense, Barrao fought top prospect Michael McDonald. McDonald gave Barrao a tough fight, using his striking and takedown defense. Eventually, Barrao took over in the fourth round and secured an arm triangle choke. After, Barrao went on his second title defense against Eddie Wineland at UFC 165. Barrao went on to defeat Wineland 35 seconds in the second round by landing a perfectly timed spinning back kick on Wineland's face before finishing him with strikes on the floor. At this point, Barrao was unstoppable. He was on a 31 fight win streak, and the momentum he had at this point added to the thoughts of MMA fans that he was going to destroy Dominic Cruz. The belt was to finally be unified at UFC 169, but Dominic Cruz pulled out due to a groin injury. After three years of not fighting, Cruz was stripped of his belt and the UFC promoted Barrao as the undisputed bantamweight champion. Uriah Faber replaced Dominic Cruz at UFC 169 to fight Hennen Barrao for the belt. Barrao was even more dominant in the second fight, defeating Faber 342 in the first round by strikes. Now at this point, I genuinely believe Barrao was going to become the greatest of all time. He was ranked number 3 in the pound for pound list and all of his performances were dominant. He had so much momentum and it didn't seem like it was going to stop anytime soon, until UFC 173 happened. Hennen Burrell was scheduled to make his second title defense against Rafael Asuncao at UFC 173, but Asuncao pulled out due to injury and was replaced by TJ Dillashaw. Burrell was a heavy favorite leading into the fight because 1. Dillashaw was only on a 2 fight win streak and 2. His last loss was to Rafael Asuncao. It honestly looked like one of those forgettable title fights that would pad Hennen Barrao's record. But me and many others were wrong. TJ Dillashaw absolutely dominated Hennen Barrao on the feet for 5 rounds before finishing him off in the 5th round by knockout. This was one of the biggest upsets of all time, but nonetheless, I was very impressed by TJ Dillashaw's performance that night. Even though Barrao lost a fight, many people still had high hopes for him. Some people saying the loss was a fluke, stating that the 
change in opponent affected Burrell's performance. An immediate rematch was booked for UFC 177, but the day before the fight, Burrell was removed from the card due to weight cutting complications. Dillashaw still fought the next day against Joe Soto and won the fight. Burrell would then be scheduled to fight Mitch Gagnon on December 20th, 2014. He went on to win the fight by third round arm triangle, but Mitch Gagnon gave him a tough fight in the prior rounds. It seemed as if that invincible aura that Burrell carried was no longer with him. That was shown in the rematch with Dillashaw when he was dominated again before finally being finished by strikes in the fourth round. He then moved up to the featherweight division to fight Jeremy Stevens, where he lost by unanimous decision. And after beating Felipe Nova by unanimous decision, Burrell went on to lose to Aljamain Sterling and Brian Keller by unanimous decision. This was a fighter who went undefeated for over nine years, but ever since he lost the belt to TJ Dillashaw, Hennon Burrell has won two of his last six fights. So what exactly is the reason for his downfall? Many people point out that ever since USADA came around, Burrell hasn't been the same fighter. It doesn't necessarily mean that he was taking steroids though. USADA doesn't allow IV hydration for weight cutting, so that could have definitely affected Burrell physically and mentally, hence why he was taken off a card for weight cutting issues. But in my opinion, I think losing to TJ Dillashaw really destroyed his confidence as a fighter. This is very similar to Francis Ngannou in his fight against Stipe Miocic. Both Burrell and Ngannou were on long win streaks and were dominant in all their fights. Then all of a sudden they lost and they didn't just lose, they lost really badly. And I feel that losing fights like that at the height of your dominance could essentially destroy your confidence. And since both fighters hardly experienced losing, they never learned how to bounce back. Now I know that Burrell is on the cusp of losing his job in the UFC, but I like to remember his time at the top. He is the only UFC fighter to defend an interim belt twice. You know how many fighters would have complained to not fight for the belt after one interim title defense? Burrell never complained, he just fought. And with his crazy speed, elite ground game, and stellar striking, Henning the Baron Burrell was a treat to watch back in the day. My name is Keon, and this was my take on what happened to Henning Burrell. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below, and I'd love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, because it will help me so much. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell right over there. So whenever I do release a video, you'll be the first to know about it. That's all I have for this video. I'll see you on my next one.